Brothers and sisters, let me invite you to uh, open up to Psalm 121. Psalm 121 with me this morning. Psalm 121. We'll read God's word together this morning. Psalm 121, verse 1. I lift my eyes toward the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector will not slumber. Indeed, the protector of Israel does not slumber or sleep. The Lord protects you. The Lord is a shelter right by your side. The sun will not strike you by day or the moon by night. The Lord will protect your life. The Lord, the Lord will protect you from all harm. He will protect your life. The Lord will protect your coming and going, both now and forever. Would you pray with me this morning? Our Lord, we look to you even now in this moment. You are our helper, our protector, our keeper. You do not slumber or sleep. You are a shelter right by our side. You will protect us, Lord, from all harm, both now and forever. And so we can trust you. We thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for this psalm in the midst of a time right now, Lord, where God, in our, in our nation, uh, Lord, there, this is a difficult, difficult time. Lord, would you help us to know and, again, turn our confidence to you that you are our helper. You are our protector. And may we keep our eyes on you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we find ourselves in Psalm 121. And Psalm 121 is located in the fifth book of... Of the Psalms, the Psalms are divided into five books of Psalms, five uh, basic groupings of Psalms, and the final of those five is Psalms 100 and, uh, 107 to 150. And so, Psalm 121 falls close to the middle of this fifth book, and it also falls in a section of Psalms, 15 Psalms, that are known as the Psalms of Ascents or Songs of Ascents. The songs of ascent were sung as Jewish pilgrims made their way up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. Many scholars believe they were sung during the festival processions, during the three annual feasts that the the Jews celebrated in Jerusalem, and sung as the pilgrims ascended through the hills up to Jerusalem. And these psalms would have also been sung by Jews as they made their way back to Jerusalem from uh, ba- Babylonian captivity. They would have sung this song, they're believed to have sung this song. Imagine with me as these pilgrims made their way to the highlands of Judah, to the city of Jerusalem, to worship in the temple and to celebrate the feasts. And they were, they were not traveling nicely paved roads like we enjoy so much today, unless you're in certain parts of Indianapolis with the potholes, but they, they didn't enjoy those kind of paths. Instead, they were just well-trodden footpaths through valleys, across rivers, over hills and mountains, and they would make their way to Jerusalem. And you, can you hear with me uh, the, the weary yet hopeful pilgrim as they break out into song and they sing, I lift my eyes toward the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. This psalm uh, before us today has 
two major divisions, verses 1 and 2, and then verses 3 through 8. And we'll see from these two divisions uh, these two main truths, and it's, it's a testimony and a reminder. So first, in verses 1 and 2, we'll see a testimony of God's faithful help for weary pilgrims. A testimony of God's faithful help for weary pilgrims. And second, in verses 3 through 8, we'll see a reminder that God will faithfully keep his people. A reminder that God will faithfully keep his people. Amen. Look first with me at verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2. A testimony of God's faithful help for weary pilgrims. A testimony of God's faithful help for weary pilgrims. The psalm begins... As, the, as the, the, the pilgrim, the psalmist writes, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where will my help come from? We see this question is asked. This pilgrim asks the question, where will my help come from? There's some differences of interpretation for this verse. Uh, what does the psalmist mean when he writes, I lift my eyes to the mountains? What does he mean? Um, there's various views, and it's hard. It, 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 it is hard to know exactly uh, what the the exact interpretation is here. But I think we can get a, a good idea. Uh, the psalmist may be saying that when he looks to the mountains, he sees the mountains as a refuge from danger. Often, throughout human history, people have 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 looked to mountains in that way. Or he may be looking at the mountains and seeing them with dread as a place of threat. Uh, not only the threat of after he's been on a long uh, uh, pilgrimage, seeing the mountains and the elevation he's going to have to cross over, and the, the difficulty of that, the physical exhaustion and the threat of the elements that there might be. But also, mountains were a place where thugs might hide and attack passersby from the high ground. So perhaps he's looking at the mountains with a, a sense of dread. I, I lift my eyes to the mountains, and then he asks the question, where am I, will my help come from? Jerusalem was located in the hills of Judah. And if a pilgrim was traveling to Jerusalem from either the Jordan River Valley in the Dead Sea region to the east, uh, or from Israel's coastal plain to the west, he would have a difficult trek uphill to Jerusalem. And so when the psalmist says, I lift my eyes to the mountains, uh, maybe he sees the mountains as uh, his destination is, is nearby. His destination is close. And, uh, but there's a, there's a final view that I think is very compelling. The song of a sense speak of the pilgrim fixing his eyes on Jerusalem ahead. When he says, I look to the mountains, those mountains he's looking at, he's seeing, he knows that's where Jerusalem lies. That's where, that's the place of the temple. That's where God dwells in a special way with his people. And there in Mount Zion in Jerusalem is, is where he is headed to worship God. And he fixes his eyes on the mountains of Jerusalem and he asks the question, where will my help come from? And so now why does he ask that question? Why does he ask the question, where does my help, where will my help come from? Why does it seem that he is questioning where his help comes from? And for the, for the believer, though, we know this, don't we? We, know, we may know that our help comes from God alone. We may know that. We often tend, though, to get our eyes off the Lord and begin to look this way and that at other things. And look at other places to put our confidence. The great line of the song, we know, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. We can hear uh, the follower of Christ in the book of Mark as he says to the Lord Jesus, Lord, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Again and again, we need to turn our gaze back to the Lord. We need to look to our God and remember that He alone is our help. He alone is our help. And not put our our gaze on other things that we're making our security, our protection. We so tend to do that, to look at other things and 
to forget the Lord. And day by day, so, so, so how do we do this? How do we do this? I think one of the ways we do this is day by day, we preach this truth to ourselves. The Lord is my help, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord is my help. And so the psalmist, he asked this question, and then we see this, this answer come in verse 2, this confident answer. He says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. My help comes from the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. Bruce Waltke, I think, rightly characterizes this psalm. He says it is a song of trust and of confidence. I think that's right. It's like that wonderful psalm so many of us know by heart, Psalm 23, right? Maybe you memorized that from the time you were a child. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. What? I shall not want. Doesn't mean you don't want the shepherd. What does that mean? The CSB translated it may be even clearer for our Uh, more modern vernacular. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. I have what I need. I can trust him. He is my help. I have confidence in him. The one singing this psalm in Psalm Psalm 121 expresses a deep and abiding trust in the Lord. A deep and abiding trust in the Lord. He answers the question of verse 1 with confidence that the maker, the creator of heaven and earth is his help. And this is where his help comes from. It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Charles Spurgeon said it this way, We are bound to look beyond heaven and earth to him who made them both. It is vain to trust the creatures. It is wise to trust the creator. Here we see in these, these verses, these uh, two of uh, four pairs that I think throughout this psalm express the completeness of God's infinite ability to help his people. The totality of God's uh, God's help for his people, his protection over his people. Look at these four pairs. In verse 2, we see the maker of heaven and earth. So, in other words, all things. He's the maker of all things. Then verse 6, we see another pair. The sun will not strike you by day or the moon by night. The sun and moon, we'll get to this in a little bit. The Lord will protect your coming and going. And then finally in verse 8, both now and forever. I think these pairs actually communicate the completeness of God's protection over his people. There's no trouble that a long life's journey that is too great for the maker of heaven and earth. And so the question raised in these verses should be turned on ourselves, shouldn't it? We shouldn't read this without turning that question back on ourselves. And so the question is, where does your help come from? Where does your help come from? What is your security? What is your security? What are you placing your security in in this life? Brothers and sisters, you understand that your help is in the Lord we know this, if you're, if you're in Christ, if you're a Christian, you know that your help is in the Lord because you have looked to Him in faith, trust in Him to redeem you from your sin and the just payment for your sins. You see, the, 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 the good news of the gospel tells us what? It tells us that though we're sinners and though we deserve uh, God's judgment for our sin, to be separated from God forever, and though we cannot help ourselves, We cannot save ourselves. We cannot uh, uh, keep ourselves from this judgment. Christ came, the Son of God came, became a man, walked this earth, lived a righteous life, and went to the cross and died for sinners like you and like me to save us, to help us by complete the complete mercy and grace of God to bring us to himself, that if we would look to him in faith, we would trust in him by faith, turning from our sins, he would redeem us, he would save us. And so that's the good news of the gospel. And Christian brother and sister, you, you know this news. You know this, and, and, and so we, our help, we know, ultimately comes from the Lord. It is the mercy of the Lord that he has saved us and that he keeps us. And if you do not, if you're here and you do not know this, uh, I, I pray that you'll come to know that this help 
this help that comes from the Lord alone, and that you'll look to Him to save you today. That you'll realize that your good works, your, your righteousness, your own works cannot save you. You cannot help yourself in this, in this way. You cannot help yourself to, to make yourself righteous before a holy God. Only the perfect work of Jesus Christ on your behalf can do that. And so if you do not know him, I pray that today you'll look to him and trust in him alone. Our help comes from the Lord. So first, we see this testimony, this testimony of God's faithful help over his, for his people. And then second, in the last uh, five verses or six verses, we'll see in verses three through eight, a reminder that God will faithfully keep his people. A reminder that God will faithfully keep his people. At this point in the psalm, the subject goes from the first person. You see, see that my help comes from the Lord. You see that my help comes from the Lord. And then it, it, it changes, doesn't it? Look in verse 3. It changes now as he, as he reminds uh, others, and, and, and actually and maybe reminding himself still, he will not allow your foot to slip. So it changes from the first person to the second person. He will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector will not slumber. What's happening here? The psalmist has given testimony of God's faithful help and protection of his people. He has turned his gaze to look to Yahweh for his help. And now he expresses this assurance uh, in the Lord to others. Uh, The psalm describes how the Lord is the keeper, protector, guardian who, who guards his people. And you see... The perils are unknown. The perils are unknown, but the security is certain. The perils, we don't know what lies ahead. But the security in God, our protector, is, is sure. And he gives a reminder of this. And the pilgrim's security is found in God alone. And in these verses, these final verses in verses 3 through 8, I think we see three pictures of Yahweh the protector of Israel. Three pictures of the Lord, of our God, uh, how he is the protector of Israel. We see that God is a protector. God, our protector, is like a vigilant watchman ensuring our perseverance. He's like a a vigilant watchman who ensures our perseverance. We see that in verses 3 and 4. And in verse 5, we see that God, our protector, is a very present shade right by our side. And then we see in verses 6 through 8 that God, our protector at all times, He is our protector at all times and in all circumstances. We see in verses 6 through 8. God, our protector, is like a vigilant watchman ensuring our perseverance. Look at verses, look at verses 3 and 4, particularly verse 3 first. What does it say? He will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector will not slumber. Indeed, the protector of Israel does not slumber or sleep. He is the insurer of our perseverance. The insurer of our perseverance. He will not allow your foot to slip. As the pilgrim made his way to Jerusalem through the hills to worship, no doubt he went through parts of this trek where his footing was not sure. There would be risk of slipping and falling, and you can imagine being between home and your destination uh, uh, to to be gravely injured uh, could have uh, dire consequences as no help would be around to help you. And so the need for sure footing was felt by the pilgrim. And what does the psalmist say? Your protector will not allow your foot to slip. In other words, he will ensure that you persevere to make it to your destination. And in the original language, these words that are translated here in verse 3, will not allow and will not slumber, uh, actually communicate a prayer. Uh, In fact, it it could be be better translated, so this could be translated, may he not allow your foot to slip. May your protector not slumber. It's a prayer. The psalmist breathes a prayer to God for the pilgrim traveler. He recognizes that unless the Lord keeps our footing, we will slip. Lord, may you not allow our feet to slip to, he, as he looks to the Lord, his help. This we all must recognize. Unless the Lord keeps us, we will be lost. Isn't that true? 
unless the Lord guides our steps, we will fall. We will fall. And Christian, you can have absolute certainty that he will not allow your foot to slip. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1 verses 4 through 9, hear the words of the, the Apostle Paul. He says this, I always thank my God for you because of the grace of God given to you in Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in him in every way, in all speech, in all knowledge. In this way, the testimony about Christ has confirmed among you so that you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you will be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. You were called by Him into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord will give us grace that we might persevere to the end. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Look to Him. This is why I love the song. Maybe one of my favorite hymns, He Will Hold Me Fast. I love that verse. I could never keep my hold. He must hold me fast. For my love is often cold. He must hold me fast. The psalmist says, He will not allow your foot to slip. He ensures our perseverance to the end. And then, in verse, the end of verse 3 and verse 4, we see this picture of our keeper and our protector, that he is a vigilant watchman. He's a vigilant watchman. Look at, look at verse, the end of verse 3 and verse 4. Your protector will not slumber. Indeed, the protector of Israel does not slumber or sleep. In Hebrew poetry, like we have before us today, when we see a repetition like this, it's often there for an emphasis. So he says in verse 3, he says, your protector will not slumber. But then he says it again. What's the problem? He says, indeed, the protector of Israel does not slumber or sleep. What's he doing? He's giving emphasis. In a sense, he's saying, your protector does not slumber. No, never slumbers or sleeps. He'll never sleep. He'll never grow weary or sleepy. He never sleeps. He always, always watching over his people. Often in the time and setting of this psalm, one who was traveling on a long pilgrim, pilgrim, pilgrimage like this to Jerusalem, if they could afford it, they, would, they, they might hire a, a watchman who would travel with them. And this, this watchman was to stay awake at night and keep watch for thieves at night. And you can imagine this man traveling all day, and then they come to their camp, and they, they put up camp, and they... Uh, they're sitting by the fire and everyone else goes to sleep and the watchman is tasked with staying awake and keeping a, hit an eye out. But he's weary from traveling and so he begins to grow sleepy and begins to fall asleep. But friends, this is not our God. He never gets sleepy. He never grows weary. Do you remember uh, the, the, the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal? 1 Kings chapter 18. I love that story. The challenge was that whichever God, the, the Lord God of Israel, or Baal, the, God of the, the false God of the, the prophets of Baal, whichever one sent down fire from heaven and consumed the sacrifice was the one who would be considered the true God. And so Elijah says to the prophets of Baal, hey, you boys go first. They begin, they begin dancing around the altar. They begin cutting themselves and screaming and yelling and crying out for Baal to send down fire from heaven. And nothing happens. And Elijah begins to mock them, doesn't he? He, he says, shout loudly, for he's a god. Maybe he's thinking it over. Maybe he has wandered away. Maybe he's on the road. Perhaps he's sleeping and will wake up. And of course, we know how the story goes, don't we? We know that no fire comes from this God, Baal. And uh, then Elijah stands up and prays, and the Lord God, the one true God, sends fire from heaven and just consumes the altar, the the sacrifice, everything. And our God does not sleep. He is not sleeping. And of course, we know know these things. And you see, our, our God never slumbers or sleeps. He's always watching over his creation and over his people in particular. He watches over his people. And so we see that God our protector is like a vigilant watchman 
ensuring our, pers- our perseverance. Your foot will not slip. Your foot will not slip. And then look with me at verse 5. God our protector is a very present shade right by your side. A very present shade right by your side. It says, verse 5, the Lord protects you. The Lord is a shelter right by your side. Here the psalmist speaks of God being like a shade or a shelter from the elements of nature on a, on a long journey. And, but he, he's not a shelter far off that you have to struggle to find. Oh, where is that shelter again? How, how do I get to that shelter? Um, but he, the Bible says he's right by your side. He's right by your side. Amen. He's right there. He's present with his people. Perhaps your translation says, at your right hand. What is this saying? It's speaking of the nearness of God to his people. He's at your right hand. He's right by your side. Ah, oh, brother and sister, remember the words of the Lord Jesus in John 14, verses 16 and 17. What does he say? I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him, but you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. God dwells with his people. And brother and sister, the Lord is not absent from you in your trial, in your trouble. He's not distant. He's not asleep. As, you, as your heart is filled with anxieties about uh, a, 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 a virus going through our land and all the unknowns of this, perhaps even a loss of jobs or security in retirements and things like that, turn, turn your gaze away from those things and turn it to the Lord who is your help. Turn it to the Lord. He is your protector. He is your keeper. He does not slumber or sleep. He is not uh, asleep now and just uh, uh, unaware of what's going on in this world. He's very much aware. He's, he's sovereign and he watches over his people. He's our protector. So he is our protector. He's a very present shade right by our side. And he is also, God is our protector at all times and in all circumstances. God is our protector at all times and in all circumstances. Look with me at verse 7, what it says. The Lord will protect you from all harm. He will protect your life. Now we know in this world we, 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 we do have troubles, don't we? We know that we do have sickness and things that are uh, sadnesses and things that help, cause us to grow weary. And, but the, the, the psalmist says the Lord will protect you from all harm. And as we mentioned earlier, the, the point in this Hebrew poetry that's coming through that the psalmist is writing at is the, 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 the totality, the completeness of God's protection over his people. Again, look at these pairs with me, verses 6 through 8. Verse 6, the sun will not strike you by day or the moon by night. Verse 8, the Lord will protect your coming and going. And then at the end of verse 8, both now and forever. One interpretation sees verse 6 speaking of God protecting the pilgrim from like sunstroke uh, in the day or from being moonstruck at night. There was a, a thought that the light of the moon would cause people to maybe temporary, temporarily go insane. There's another interpretation that would think would, would say that the protection is from the heat of the day or the cold of the night. That's that's possible for sure. Another though that I that I that I think is correct is that the sun by day or the moon by night speaks to to the totality of God's protection over His people. In other words, He protects His people twenty four seven three sixty five day and night twenty four seven He watches over His people. And then the Lord will protect your coming and your going. Your coming and going. That's that's all we ever do, isn't it? We're either coming or we're going, right? We're coming or we're going. What's this speaking of? Again, in every task, in every circumstance, as we go about our days, the Lord is our protector. He's our security. And how long, how long can we count on this security to last? What's the expiration date? When's the moments that we have to be careful because that security is not there? Well, he, he answers that at the end of the psalm. The Lord is your protector. He protects your coming and going both now 
and forever. Both now, today, and forever. Christian brother and sister, hear the words of the Lord Jesus in John 16, 33. In this world you will have trouble. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. We have a world full of troubles, full of sorrows, full of sadnesses. And But the Lord is our help. He's our help. He's right by our side. The Lord is our protector. And we turn our eyes to Him. There's an there's a old hymn uh, just this week becoming more familiar with, Whate'er my God ordains is right. And it was translated by a, a, a woman by the name of Catherine Winkworth. Whate'er my God ordains is right, His holy will abideth. I will be still, whate'er He doth, and follow where He guideth. He is my God, though dark my road. He holds me that I shall not fall. Wherefore to Him I leave it all. Whate'er my God ordains is right, He never will deceive me. He leads me by the proper path. I know he will not leave me. I take content what he hath sent. His hand can turn my griefs away. And patiently I wait his day. Whate'er my God ordains is right, though now this cup in drinking may bitter seem to my faint heart, I take it all unshrinking. My God is true, each morn anew. Sweet comfort yet shall fill my heart, and pain and sorrow shall depart. Whatever my God ordains is right, here shall my stand be taken. Though sorrow, need, or death be mine, yet am I not forsaken. My Father's care is round me there. He holds me that I shall not fall. And so to Him I leave it all. Brothers and sisters, where does your help come from? Where are you seeking your help from? In these just very difficult days, very sad days. Where does your help come from? And may you answer with the psalmist, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Would you pray with me now? God, we are so thankful in this moment that we are not alone, that we are not Journey, journeying on this pilgrimage of life, this very difficult journey at times, heading to our heavenly destination, heading to where we long to be, which is far better, which is with you, our Lord and our Savior, forever and ever. We long for that new creation that you're to bring, where all tears will be wiped away, where justice will reign truly, where there will be no sickness. We long for that time. We long to see you. But right now we're on this pilgrimage. We're on this very difficult journey. And Lord, you are our help. And God, we know that you will keep us. You will protect us. Nothing comes into our life that is not of just your good providence as you shape us more and more into the image of Christ, and as you uh, draw us to dependency on you, even with the, the, the trials and the difficulties that we go through. And so, Lord, I pray that we would know this deeply today. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. May you be glorified uh, through your word today, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.